Welcome back to another segment of the best monotype teams for every game. Last time we covered the water type teams for every game. Today we have the worst typing of all being the bug type. Bug types across the board are generally not that great. However, there are still some really good ones out there, especially after gen three. Now I'm just gonna go out and say, some of these journeys are gonna be rocky. After all, you are using the bug type. Quite a few bug types are generally available pretty early on in most of the main series games. So the good thing is you will have most of the team members relatively early on. I will say though, some games have limited options for bug types available. So in some cases, an entire team will just consist of the only bug types available period. This is gonna be interesting, and you guys will see that as we cycle through the generations. They will get better as the generations go on though. Before we hop into the teams though, let me hop into some rules. There will be teams for pretty much every single game grouping by a regional basis. Fire Red and Leaf Green will represent Kanto. Platinum will represent Sinnoh. Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Johto. Black and White 2 will be their own separate things. X and Y, Kalos, Oras, Hoenn, Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon, Alola, Sword and Shield, Galar, and then Legends Arceus. These teams should still work for Red, Blue, Yellow, Gold, Silver, Crystal, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, and Diamond and Pearl and the remakes. So pretty much every single game will be covered. There will also be no version exclusive Pokemon, no trade evos, no egg moves, etc. All the Pokemon featured on these teams are also available pre-post game. On occasion in this vid, I may provide locations, as well as to get certain Pokemon. But I will not be telling you guys what each mon does well against, nor suggesting movesets. There will be move suggestions, just not full-blown movesets for each Pokemon. If I did all that, this video would go on for a pretty long time. You guys, however, are more than welcome to suggest movesets in the comment section below. But alright, with that said, I think you guys get it. Be sure to also let me know down below what typing you guys want to see me cover next. As usual, the typing with the most upvotes will be the one I cover next time. Alright, now let's hop into these teams. Okay, starting off with Kanto, we have a case of not having a full team due to limited options being available. With the only options for bug types in Kanto, we have Butterfree, Beedrill, Parasect, Venomoth, and Scyther slash Pinsir. This is the only case of not having access to a full team for the remainder of this video. Butterfree, Venomoth, and Scyther slash Pinsir are obviously the best members of this team. Butterfree and Venomoth at least have access to Psychic, which is definitely the best part about them. With Bug and Flying being physical in Generation 3, this hinders these two special attackers a lot. Scyther slash Pinsir are definitely going to be the best options for this team. And the majority of the time, they will be doing a lot of the heavy lifting in my opinion. I understand that Scyther and Pinsir are version exclusive mons, however in this case due to not even having access to a full team, I don't have any problem using them, plus both options are pretty good, so it's not like one really outshines the other. Either of these mons work and each have their own merit. I'm just gonna say for Kanto, good luck to ya, because this journey will be rough. Swords Dance with Scyther will be beneficial, and Pinsir is pretty much Heracross, except the fighting moves aren't stab. Be sure to also utilize Butterfree's and Venomoth's move pulls as best as you can with whatever options you'd like to use. Next, we head over to Sinnoh, and right off the bat, we're using Platinum. Diamond and Pearl do not have the options for bug types like Platinum does. This team also will not work for Diamond and Pearl or the Remix, because a few of these mons are Platinum exclusive only. All things considered, this team looks pretty good. Motham, Beautifly, Vespaquin, Heracross, Yanmega, and Scyther. Motham and Beautifly are obviously not the greatest, but we gotta use what we have available. However, they have all right move pulls, consisting of moves like Giga Drain, Shadow Ball, etc. Silverwind can be handy if you can pull off the stat changes. Once Quiver Dance comes around, these mons will be better. Next, we have Vespaquin, which I actually see myself sleeping on a little bit. Stealth Rocks don't really exist in in-game playthroughs, and this mon has great defense stats, 102 in both, and decent attack with both being at base 80. It doesn't have a fantastic move pull though, but with the options we got, you're gonna have to deal with it. Heracross is definitely going to be the MVP of this team, and perhaps might even be for the entire video. 
You do have to get it via the honey tree, but I guarantee you will not regret it because Heracross is needed for this team. It has great stats and that fighting type is fantastic. Next is Yan Mega, and this is one of the reasons why I chose to go the Platinum route. Having the abilities of either Speed Boost and Tinted Lens is going to be great for a bug Pokemon like this. What really grinds my gears about Yen Mega though is that it doesn't get any good bug or flying attacks until way later in the game. Game Freak has the tendency to do this a lot, as you will see later in the video. There are still other TMs available, it just sucks that you have to wait so long to get decent moves. The best one you can get is Silverwind, which is a TM found on Route 212. Lastly is Scyther, and despite trade evos not being allowed, Scyther is still pretty good. What helps it is Technician. Wing Attack is going to be great for it, and Fury Attack will be good as well. Plus, it's got Sword Stance, so that's even better. So, this team is definitely better than Fire Red and Leaf Green, but I wish Yan Mega had more to offer earlier in the playthrough. We are now off to Johto. And how fitting, considering it has an entire bug catching contest dedicated to it. The majority of the Pokemon on the team will be available there, by the way. Fortress, Yan Mega, Venomoth, Scyther, Pinsir, and Heracross. Now, I couldn't decide between Fortress and Butterfree, but I like Fortress because of its typing. But if you do want to use Butterfree, you can. Butterfree, in my opinion, is a bit better offensively. And if you don't want to use a defensive Pokemon like Fortress, I can understand why. Fortress does have a decent move pool though. Its defense could save you as well. In fact, I can actually see it helping out against Lance. Yen Mega I've spoken about already for Platinum, but I still think it's better than most of the bug types available. Venomoth I've spoken about too, but in Generation 4 it gets much better. Its special attack can finally be used, and it gets Signal Beam at level 37 with access also to the Sludge Bomb TM as well. Arguably, the best mod on this team is definitely Heracross. I've spoken about Heracross many times on my channel before, so it's no surprise that it's back again. It will decimate Whitney, and like I said earlier, having that great typing of bug fighting is going to be fantastic for this team. It's the glue that pretty much holds this team together. Scyther I've spoken about for Platinum, and the same thing can be applied here too. Pinsir is pretty much the same as it was in Fire Red and Leaf Green, being similar to Heracross except not having access to Fighting Stab. Regardless though, it's still pretty good. Now we're in Unova, and despite there only being limited options, I feel this team isn't bad with the choices available. Levani, Scullipede, Crustle, Galvantula, Durant, and Volcarona. Levani is pretty decent having a dual typing of grass and bug, and this thing makes Parasect look like a joke. 92 base speed and 103 base attack is pretty solid. Its learn set and move pull are also very good for an early bug type. Next is Scallopede, and if you've played competitive, you'll find it's pretty good because of its speed boost ability alongside its great 100 base attack. I would argue Scallopede may actually be the MVP for this team. It's got a great learn set and a pretty good move pull to utilize. You can also find Venipede very early on, so that's a major plus. Third is Crustle, and it's here because of options available. It's not bad, but I wish we had better choices. That rock typing could come in clutch though. Rock polish is nice for it. Fourth is Galvantula, and that addition of the electric type will help you a lot, especially with Skyla. Great stats, decent learn set, and also a great move pull. Here's the part of the team where things start to get a little rough. Durant is great, but you have to wait till Victory Road to get it. I would use a Selgor and X Cavalier, but they're both trade evos, so they're out of the equation. Durant is still dope, but due to it being only available on Victory Road, it's pretty late to the party. Last is Volcarona, and I actually didn't want to use it. Some of you may be asking, why? It's Volcarona. It's one of the best bug types in existence. Well, you remember earlier when I complained about Yan Mega? Well, the same thing applies here, except it's worse. Look at its learn set. Yeah, nothing good until level 50 or higher. Plus, Larvesta doesn't evolve until level 59. So, four out of six members are decent overall, but the other two you don't get to fully utilize until the very last part of the game. 
Moving over to Black and White 2, this team is still relatively similar to the Black and White one, with the only differences being Heracross and Vespaquin. Heracross I've spoken about, and I'm gonna sound like a broken record talking about it for the remainder of the video. I've also already spoken about Vespaquin, but it does get better in Gen 5, which is nice. Other than that, the team is the same. I'm also gonna address the elephant in the room before we head over to Kalos, because I know if I don't, people are gonna ask about it. Volcarona can be obtained here, but the same scenario also applies where it doesn't get any great moves until very late game. One thing I love about Pokemon X and Y are the options of Pokemon that are available to use. I said that the generations got better as we went on, and Kalos proves that. Vivalon, Butterfree, Yanmega, Scullipede, Heracross slash Pinsir, and Durant. Vivalon is the typical moth-like Pokemon introduced every gen. It's got decent stats and an improved move pool for bug types this gen. Bug Buzz at level 35 and Quiver Dance at level 45. Much better. Similarly to Vivalon, Butterfree now has access to Quiver Dance as well. This made me pick it over Vespaquin. It also has a better learn set than it did previously, now being able to learn Bug Buzz earlier. Returning from earlier, we have Yen Mega, and Kalos finally fixed the problem it had. With Move Relearn, Bug Buzz and Air Slash are now available earlier. In addition with the two abilities it can use, Yen Mega improved a lot. Scallopede I've spoken about already, and the same things I said earlier apply here as well. Heracross and Pinsir return too, only this time one is exclusive to X and the other to Y. Obviously, if you're playing Y, Heracross is definitely the better of the two, but don't sleep on Pinsir. I also know I said no version exclusives in the intro, and I should have reiterated that in some cases there can be version exclusives as long as the counterpart Pokemon is as good. So, for cases like Pinsir and Heracross, obviously that's fine. But with Pokemon like Starmie in Fire Red and Leaf Green only being exclusive to Leaf Green, that's obviously a big difference. Lastly is Durant, and the big difference here is that it can be obtained much earlier. So now you have its great stats, typing, learn set, and move pull to use at an earlier time. Moving into Hoenn, we have a similar situation of limited options, but because move pulls are improved, it kind of balances itself out. We have Beautifly, Masquerade, Ninjask, Shedinja, Heracross, and Pinsir. Quiver Dance is definitely going to be your best friend with Beautifly and Masquerade. And with their wider move pulls, it doesn't look as bad. Ninjask and Shedinja, I understand, are interesting choices. But due to limited options, you guys get the drill at this point. Ninjask has Speed Boost, so that's a plus. But with the all right learn set, it could be a tad rough. The X Scissor TM can't be found until Victory Road, so that hinders it a bit. But I guess learning it at level 47 isn't the worst timing in the world. Sheninja to you guys is probably the biggest WTF option so far, but I chose it because Wonder Guard can be fun. However, if you don't like Sheninja, Armaldo can be another choice to use, which I actually think is better in the long run, but Sheninja was just irresistible to not choose. Lastly, we got Heracross and Pinsir, and usually I praise these two a lot, but there's a downside here. You don't get them until the Safari Zone, which in case you didn't know, isn't until right before Lily Cove City. Regardless, the same sentiment applies to them like always, albeit they are a bit further in the games than usual. On to Alola. The bug types here will consist of Butterfree, Vikavolt, Rabombi, Masquerade, Pinsir, and Golisopod. I've spoken on Butterfree before, so with that we can move on to Vikavolt. Vikavolt has been seen on my channel a few times, and it's pretty dang good. The electric bug type is incredibly versatile, and that special attack it sports is nothing to sneeze at. What I also love about Vikavolt is its very early game availability. Next is Rabombi, which is what I could consider to be the improved version of Pokemon like Butterfree and the like. Rabombi comes attached with the fairy typing, which is a huge plus. Great stats, learn set, and move pull. Stab fairy is great. Next is Masquerade, and I've already spoken about that Pokemon as well as Pinsir. I've spoken briefly about Golisopod in the Water Team's vid, but I'll get more into it here. 
This giant bug is Guzma's ace for a reason. That massive attack paired with the likes of First Impression and the other moves it has access to will help a lot in this journey. With Ultra Sun and Moon, the team stays the same other than swapping out Masquerain for Volcarona. Volcarona can be found via SOSing for Larvesta in the lush jungle. Though, like usual, it has no special fire type attacks for a long time. And your best option is Ember. This can be powered up by giving it a charcoal, even though it probably won't improve it much. Signal Beam can be taught though via the Heia Heia Beach Move Tutor. Let's go to Galar now, where we will see a mixture of familiar faces and a few new ones. I've spoken about Galvantula, Rabambi, Vespaquin, and Golasopod previously, so I'll just leave them here. Vespaquin's learn set improved now though, so that is a good thing to see. The two new faces are Orbeetle and Centiscorch. Orbeetle is a pretty fun choice, having the addition of the Psychic typing. With this typing, it increases the amount of moves a typical bug type has access to, with options like Calm Mind. Though it is a bit more defensive, with Calm Mind, this beetle can become a very good specially offensive monster. With Scorch, I really wish this critter existed in prior gens, because Volcarona just wasn't cutting it. I'm talking specifically from an in-game perspective, not from a competitive one. Volcarona's lack of good moves until very late game hindered it a lot in previous generations. Scorch gets Flame Will at level 15 and Bug Bite at level 20. That's two base 60 attacks pretty early on. This is a godsend in comparison to what Larvesta has. Plus, you can run Sun of Scorch as a mixed attacker too. I really hate to throw shade at Volcarona because it is one of my favorite bug types, but it gets so shafted for in-game playthroughs up to this point, and it sucks because it's so good. All right, let's close out this video with Legends Arceus. We got Beautifly, Motham, Vespaquin, Cleaver, Heracross, and Yanmega. I've spoken about all these mons already, aside from Cleaver. Cleaver was a brand new addition to the Pokedex as of Legends Arceus, and is a form of branch evolution to the Scyther line. It's pretty easy to evolve, all things considered, using the Black Augurite. This can be found by hopping on Ursaluna and sniffing around. Cleaver has a decent speed stat of 85 and a massive attack stat of 130. It's also got a pretty good learn set, getting moves like Rock Slide at level 36 and x Scissor at level 40. Its move pull is also pretty wide, with quite a few stab options available, and some coverage with moves like Brick Break, Close Combat, Aerial Ace, etc. Other than that though, I feel like this is the best bug type team for Legends Arceus. Good luck against Volo. All right. That concludes the best bug type teams for every game. Some of these gens were pretty rough with the limited options and shallow move pulls, but I did the best I could with the options that were available. And nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed these teams. What'd you guys think though? Would you change any Pokemon? If so, why? Let me know your thoughts down below, as well as the typing you'd like to see next. Remember, the comment with the most upvotes will be the next one that we cover. We're finally here in 2023, and I'm super excited for what this year has to offer us. There's potential DLC for Scarlet and Violet on the horizon, and who knows just what else Game Freak may have up their sleeves. It's going to be really exciting times coming up for a Pokemon fan. If you're interested in more Mystic content, check out my TikTok and Mystic Umbreon Shorts YouTube channel. I've got a really fun series starting up there very soon, and of course, have a weekly edition of my Should You Use series focusing on Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. Also, if you're into fan fictions and what ifs, check out Mystic Reads. I offer a ton of creative spoken word content on there, so come join me. Thanks again for joining me today, and I'll see you all next time.